All right, so I've been thinking about using Warp for a uh, website, and I'm also thinking about using it for the front end portion as an HTML stuff. And in the Warp example for HTML, they use handlebars. So let's look in the handlebars and figure out how it works. Let's do it. All right, so let's go to the crates.io page for handlebar. Handlebars, plural. All right, so here we are, handlebars, handlebars. If you note here, it says handlebars hyphen Rust. And that's because this is a port of a JavaScript library called handlebars to Rust. Continuing onward. Handlebars templating language implemented in Rust and for Rust. Handlebars Rust is the template engine that renders the official Rust website, rustling.org, its book. So off the gate, we can just see that this is used in a few very important places, at least to me, because I've, I've read through that book. The book's near and dear to my heart. We're going to the quick start. So in the quick start, we see Hannah bars. We have a macro use from Serdy JSON, and we're using Hannah bars, Hannah bars. And then the meat and potatoes is here in the main function. So it seems to be two main ways of using handlebars. One is to uh, register a template using a given name. And the other one is to just render it. Don't register a template. So here, we just render the template by passing in a templated string. And you see hello. And you can see the double brackets with the variable name inside. And then here, we pass in our JSON object, which I believe is being deserialized. Or, no, it's being serialized to JSON. There we go, serialized to JSON. And that is name foo. So name is going to be equal to foo. And then here's the second example where we register a template. So we're registering a template string. We give it a name. And then here's the string. And then here's the variable that we're replacing. So when we render it, give it the name to say which template we're associating this with and pass in the needed data for that template. Pretty straightforward. So moving down to code example. If you are not familiar with Handlebar's language syntax, it is recommended to walk through their intro first. And when they say their intro, um, I'm highlighting over it, but I'm, well, I'm hovering over it. They mean the Handlebar's website for the JS implementation which we'll go through in just a second. First, let's finish reading this section. Check the render example in the source tree. The example shows you how to create a handlebars registry and register the templates from files, create a custom helper with closure or struct implementing helper def and register it, define and prepare some data, render it. So these are some things we can probably see in the example directory. Um, they say check out the render example, but I'm sure there are other examples because I've looked through them. There are other examples. And then when you're running an example, or at least this one, cargo run, example, render. And as a bonus, they have logging. So if you want to see the logging, just do that. Cool. And then they say check out examples for more concrete demos. All right, so now that we finished that, let's go to the Handlebars website. And I have it open already, so let me close that and come here. So in this website, they have an introduction. And this introduction is pretty great. I just walked through it earlier today. So what is Handlebars? Handlebars is a simple templating language. Gather that, yes. It uses a template and an input object to generate HTML or other text formats. Handlebars templates look like regular text with embedded handlebars expressions. And um, the, the double bracket is seemingly what they mean by handlebar expressions. What they explain right here. Cool. Installation, we don't care about because we're using Rust. So, simple expressions. We saw this in the quick start. We just have the uh, expression the variable name that we want to access. Well, here's two. 
And then here's an example of the JSON you will provide, which is first name, first name, last name, last name. Understood? That'll be the output. Oh, so you can deal with nested input objects. For example, this one's a person and has first name and last name. So in the syntax here, it's person dot first name, person dot last name. Okay, makes sense. We can do things like that. We have evaluation context with each and with. So you can say with person, do the first name and then the last name. Takes the same input. And then you can do each if there's an iterable. So here are people. And for each person, I guess, well, each person in people, print out this. And this is these people's names. Understood? We can add comments. It's good to know. We can write custom helpers, which is very important. So you can do this is the regular one we've seen plenty of times earlier, first name. But here we have loud, and it looks like it takes in last name. So functionality is you register a helper, give it a name, this name corresponds to this name, and this is the function, and it takes in a string. And it just, in this case, it makes that string uppercase. The syntax in Rust is a little different, but the functionality is still the same. Um, each people, register print people, function. Oh, I see what they're doing here. So in this example, um, they're saying that the context is passed in to the helper function. So you don't have to explicitly pass in the person each time if you want, at least in JSON, uh, in the JavaScript version, you can do this dot first name and this dot last name. I think we can do something like that in Rust, but I'm not positive. I'm not too familiar with that library yet. All right, so for this section, I'm talking about block helpers. Um, block expressions allow you to define helpers that will invoke a section of your template with a different context than the current. These block helpers are identified by the hashtag preceding the helper name. So for example, each, we didn't write that one, but that is has a hashtag preceding it and the uh, backslash, I guess when it ends. And that is quote unquote a block helper. And it looks like you can make custom block helpers. I'm pretty sure you can do that in the Rust version as well. Not positive, but pretty sure. Moving onward, HTML escaping. Uh, they do this thing where if you put three, I guess, mustaches, then it's raw. That I'm not sure if exists in the Rust version, but we'll check in a second. They also have explicit functions to do this, which I know definitively that we have that in the Rust version. All right, coming down to a very, very important part, partials. Handlebars, partials allow for code reuse by creating shared templates. You can register a parcel using register parcel method. Um, so let, let's walk through this example because this is actually really important. So we're registering a partial. We're calling it person. And this is the template string, right? And then the following template and, and input. So each person's, and we have this syntax, which is just like an arrow thing. Person, which is the name of this partial, and then passing in the person uh, equals that. I'm not exactly sure what that means but more or less just in terms of high level overview we're passing in these people and they're going to print out this thing and this could be placed in a different template so this gets registered another template and calls it and is able to use it more or less and that is the quick overview of handlebars so got a general sense of what it is what it does now let's check out the rust stuff and when I say check out the Rust stuff, we can go to their repository, download it, and then look at the examples. Here's the repo, and we have a number of examples. So let me get my terminal up and running, and I'll get back to you. All right, so now I have my terminal open. I did a quick clone of the library. It looks like, oh, that's one thing I actually skipped over. We should probably talk about. 
So in terms of this library, they have Rust compatibility table, right? If you're using version 3.0 or higher, you need a minimum version of 1.32 Rust. And then they have older versions like 2.0, 1.1 series, 1 series. That said, if you do a clone of the repo today, it looks like they're working on the 4 series and it's currently an alpha phase. I ran the examples in 4 series, everything seemed to work, so I'm just going to stay here. Alright, going back to here. So one of the examples they have is the quick example. So I think I'm going to start with that. Cargo run. Example quick. And it just printed out this stuff and see what the quick example is. Move this over real quick. So in the quick example, you have standard error, handlebars, handlebars, import JSON from Serdy JSON, creating new instance of handlebars. We render a template. Hello. So this is exactly what the quick start was. Okay, cool. We've seen this before. This is what we expected to see. Good to know. So let's move on to a different example. They mentioned render in the uh, cargo page. So let's see what render has. And it has quite a bit here. So let's scroll down to main first, and then we can start going through the rest of that stuff. So in main, we have a logger, which they did mention, we can run it with logs. Create a new handlebars instance. We are then registering a template file. So if you note here, they call they're calling this template file table, and it's just an HTML page, seemingly with the extension HBS. And to see what that page looks like, let me just open it real quick. Examples, render, here we go, HBS file, HTML head, we have some Chinese here, I believe it's Zhong Chao Lian Sai, which is some sort of competition, cool, we're going to have a year here, a year here, it is using, what was this called, block, Block. Hold on. What were they called? Block helpers. Yes. So using the block helper each, and for each of the teams, as T, we're using this squiggly line. The squiggly line was in the uh, handlebars JSON page. We didn't see it in the examples. Uh, in the intro, but it just means to clear out white space. And then it looks like here they're creating a list, class, ranking label. Okay, see what that is shortly. They're getting an index, and looks like they're looking at all of the teams. Understood. Here we have the log, so we can log stuff from within these templates. And then here we're doing t.name, so team.name, and then formatting the team's points. Get rid of that white space. And then down here we're just saying what it was rendered by. Okay, so that's the template, which we're going to come back to. We have registered some custom helpers. So we have the format helper and the ranking label helper. So if you recall, uh, let's do the format helper first. So we have format, and it looks like it's taking in team points. Uh, down here we also have make data, which is probably really important as well. So we should probably look at make data first, just to get a sense of what's being passed in. 
So make data. Here is make data. And we're creating a map. We're inserting things. Year 2015. And then we have a list of the teams. And they have a name. And then they have points. And this is like 43 in unsigned 16 bit integer. So points is going to be an integer. So we know that format is going to format points. And here we have box new format helper. Format helper, I believe, is a method that's already written. So let's scroll up. Format helper is here. Let's define a custom helper. So it looks like we have some standard imports, sorry, uh, some standard parameters that have to be passed in. One is H for helper, handlebars, I don't know what that does, context, sure, I kind of know what that does, just because context is usually just like something you can pass in to use, but still it's not being used in this thing. Rendered context, also not being used. And then we have the output, which is uh, mutable. Output is mutable. Rendered context is also mutable, but we're not using it. All right, so moving on. Once we get inside the function, or we can look at the result. The result is an OK, or we're rendering an error. Understood. So here it says, get parameter from helper or throw an error. So the parameters are seemingly attached to eight, which is the helper. And it looks like you can just do param and then get the index. OK, so this person wants the first param, which should be the point value. And if it's OK, it's OK. If it's not OK, do a render error. And now that we know it's OK, we're coming down to here, rendered. So we have the number, which is param value. And then we're going to render it. So seemingly make it into a string. And then we're formatting this to be the number and the points. And then out that right, we're going to write a reference to it. So out that right is seemingly the template, like what we're actually putting into the template. And then we send an OK, saying that it's done. That's good to know. So coming back down, the next thing to look at is the ranking label. So come back to the template, right? We have a list, we have a class, and then we have a ranking label, and it has this syntax for index and teams. Understood. So let's find this method. I think I skipped it. Oh, box new rank helper. Find rank helper. That's this thing. So it has the same list of parameters coming in. We have a helper. We have handlebars not used, context is not used, render context not used. Then we have the out, which we know we're going to modify and add stuff to. Um, if we look back at the handlebars template, we see that this takes in two things an index and a dot dot slash teams. So the index, I believe, to be the current number of the item that you're on, because teams is the list. And the dot dot slash teams, I believe, to be the entire list of teams. And I'll tell you why I believe that to be, to be true in a second. So if you come into here, right, we have rank H, because H is the helper, looking at the first item, which should be the index. Um, and then we're taking the value as uh, U64. Cool. And we're checking to see if it's OK. It is. And then we're converting that to U size. Seemingly. All right. So then the second 
value, which I believe to be teams, but we'll find that in a second. So we have 8, which is the helper. We're looking at the second param, which is at index 1. We're taking it as a reference, and then we're converting it to an array, because the value should be an array, a list of teams. And then, doing a map, we want the length of how many teams there are. So the total number of teams. And then we're checking to see if everything is OK. So in theory, we should have the index and the total number of teams. So if the rank is equal to 0, we're modifying out to write champion. And one thing I haven't mentioned, and you haven't seen yet because I haven't ran this, is that it's assumed that the list is already in order of um, greatest amount of points to least amount of points. So the person at index 0 is the champion. And then else if, if rank is greater than or equal to the total, which is the total amount of teams, minus 2, so seemingly the last two teams, then we write relegation. relegation. Now, if the rank is less than or equal to 2, so if the rank is not 0, but also less than or equal to 2, so teams um, starting the index at 0, so 0, 1, and 2. So the first two teams after the champion are going to get ACL written to them. And then we're going to return OK. All right. So that was this helper. So now let's look at make data, and then we can run this to verify everything we said is correct. So in make data, we come here. Uh, I guess we have to look at this as well, but that's coming. We did the data map. We did the insertion of the year, 2015. And then we briefly looked at teams. So team. It's going to be placed in the vector, but team itself is a uh, struct. And the struct can be serialized. The reason why it has to be serialized is because we're passing into a template. And the template uses JSON data, sorry, JSON. So anyway, we have the collection of teams. We have 43 points, seemingly 39 points, 27, and different locales. And then we also have teams, and then we have the engine. Uh, teams is our list of teams right here, just to find them. And then engine, which I believe was at the bottom of the template, just referring here again. Is types. Where was that placed? Here we go. It's just a string, a static string. Nothing special about it. OK. So ultimately, we take handlebars render, we pass in the table, which we pulled from that file that we've been looking at, and we pass in the necessary data. Now let's look at how that works, runs. Cargo run example. This is render. Dun, 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 dun. And let's pull out the template on this side just so we can see it. Right there. That seems to be fine. So we have the title. And we have the year, which is 2015. We saw that in make data. We have CSL. We have the year. You saw in make data. Now coming down to here, the li, which is we're already in the, the for loop for each, and this is the class. Champion, which is the first person in the list, or first team in the list. Index. And we have team name, which is here in bold. 
followed by the points, which is formatted. Format points. For the second and third team, we have ACL. Let's, let me go back to those rules. That was here. So if the rank was zero, first in the list, you got champion. If the rank was less than or equal to two, you got ACL. One and two, so teams second and third. There's nothing for four, fifth, and six. But the last two teams got this. And last but not least, I believe in the template we have engine right here. So rendered by handlebars from engine data. And this was just the, the static string that was in the file. So this example covered a lot in terms of functionality. There are two more examples I like to go over. Um, one is writing things to file and the other one is the parcels. And then after that we can go back to the warp just so I can show you how it's used there. So let's do render to file. Make this big. So this file is almost exactly identical as the one we just looked at. What I mean to say is, you can ignore this line, just comment it out. We have a logger. Oh, that's what we forgot to do. We forgot to run it with the logger. Do it with this one. Anyway, we have a logger. We have a handlebars instance. We have format, format helper, exactly the same. Ranking label, ranking helper, exactly the same. Make data is exactly the same. We are opening the file to get the template. Which I guess it's in a different location, so it might be slightly different. Let's verify. Not this one. Go back. Examples. Render file. Template. And quick overview. It looks seemingly exactly the same. Cool. So the thing that is different is now we have an output file. Let mutable output file equal file create. And here's the file. So now what we do is handlebars render template source to write. And we pass in our template. We pass in our data, and we pass in where we want to write it to, or the writable object. And then you just tell us it's done. So let's do that, but we should also do it with the, the, the logger stuff set. So let me look up that command real quick. They did Rust logger and then they did handlebars and info. I believe we just need info. Cool. And this example is the render render file. All right. So we do Rust. Oh, I forgot what the command was log log info cargo run example render file so we see the logs from the template and to match that to the template if you look over here we have this log line and we're just logging the index so it's an info, we have the time, helpers, helper log, sure. And then we have the index, and then the value is equal to. And this is from the actual file. So if we go back to the file, this is it. Scroll down to the bottom. 
this was created at target table HTML. So we can do Firefox target table HTML. And this is the file we just created. So I'll move this over. Joseph, make it a little bit bigger. So this file looks exactly like the one we had in our terminal, except now it's actually rendered via HTML. And to show you the list stuff where the class has been modified, you can click here. You can see that this is champion, and this is ACL, ACL, empty, and that one's also set as well. So everything is more or less the same. So now we got to go to parcels, and parcels allows for um, template inheritance. So let's close that. Close this. Partials. Whew. Okay, so this example confused me for a very long time. I was looking at this for like an hour straight. Uh, and we'll go into why in a little bit. So let's start off. We have our logger, handlebars. Not sure what Matt Lit is doing, but it's here. Handlebars, handlebars, standard error. Cool. Let's get to the main. We have our logger. Handlebars creating a new instance. And here we go. We have register template file. So here's the name of the template. And here's the location of it. And then down here we have two more. Register template file. Here's the name of the template. Here's the location of it. Name, location. And then down here we have the B tree of two objects, data zero, data one. They have a title, example zero, and they have parent, base zero. Now, this one has the exact same keys, only difference is example one and base one. Base zero refers to this template. Base one refers to this template. And then coming down here, we have, we print it out. Page zero, handlebars, render, template, so not base, template, and the first set of data. Page one, print out, handlebars, render, template again, and the second set of data. And let me print this so you can see what it does. So this is, take out the logger. Partials. So here we go. I'm showing you the end product first before we go to the HTML pages. Page zero, HTML, head, example zero, body, div, h1, derived from base zero, and then rendered in parcel, parent is base zero, body, end of HTML. And in page one, it's almost identically the same with the exception of, here we have head equals example one, derived from base one, and here render in parcel, parent is base one. Cool. So now let's look at these templates. And they're both in examples parcels. So come up here, examples, mm, parcels. Let's go to template, base zero, base one. So here's template. It is an inline uh, marker here, inline block helper. Calling it itself page. And then it says rendered in parcel parent is parent. And then it ends the inline. So this 
template refers to this line and this line subsequently. Remove white space with, so this is a comment, but it's saying that the squiggly lines remove white space. Good to know. And then we have parent here. And now we know parent is going to be either base zero or base one. So let's look at base zero. Base zero, <laughs> base zero has the HTML stuff. So we have HTML, we have the head, example, which is the title, body, we have the div stuff, so that's here, and then we have a pointer to page, and page from here is the inline. So that's seemingly been taken from here and then used into here. And we have body HTML. And that accounts for here and here. Well, hold on. Not necessarily the second one. The second one is slightly different um, in that this line is different. So this is base one. All right, so getting to the part that confused me. If we look at the source code, both of these say render template. And here's the data. Render template. And here's the data. For the longest, I couldn't figure out how this map to base 0 and this map to base 1 if they're both calling template. And here was my mistake. So we know that this is inline, and we know where this is used. And then we see the syntax. This is a parcel calling the parent. And then we come to here. This is a parcel calling page. So in, in a sense, this example has two levels of misdirection going through. It has the template calling something within base, and then the base then calling something within the template for it to be rendered completely. And what I mean to say is, template gets called first. And if it's coming with example zero and base zero, we get here, it's going to call parent. And parent we just passed in. And has a register name of base zero. OK, so we're going to look at base zero. Come here to base zero. Base zero is going to get rendered out. We're going to have the title because title was example zero. And then it's going to look for a page, which page is now also registered because the template registered it as an inline. And from my understanding, inlines are, are like blocks of HTML code that any template can use. So now that it is registered, it can be used. So this is calling page, which exists there. And that's how like the circular stuff works. Confused me for the longest. A long story short, a lot of my confusion came from the different syntax of how parcels are being written. And when I say that, what I mean is, if you go to the handlebars documentation in JavaScript, and we look at partials, I see this syntax, which is just the bracket, like the, the I guess, less than or greater than sign. I forget which direction is which. Anyway, we see that. And that's what I was expecting. So when I saw the squiggly line and that uh, symbol, I thought it could possibly mean something else. Wasn't sure. So I started looking at the documentation, or at least the source code for partials. And I found the test, which brought me to this. And the test is showing me different ways that you can write a partial. So you can use that syntax. You don't have to always use the squiggly line. You can use this. And you don't necessarily have to have the brackets here or the parentheses. You can also seemingly pass in values to a partial, which is kind of cool. But these are the different ways you can do with partials, right? And here they check to see that 
rule parcel expression is hit. So in order to fully understand this, I need to understand what is a rule and what is a parcel expression. What does that mean? So I started trying to look for it. If you scroll up to the top to see the imports, keep scrolling, we see that it's super, handlebar parser, and rule. I'm looking at super section. There's nothing here about uh, rules. I see the handlebar parser, but I do not see a rule. But what I do see is this grammar.pest file. P-E-S-T. Huh. What's got me thinking? What is that? Grammar.pest. I come here, and this is what I see. It's not a Rust file. It's a P-E-S-T file. And I'm not sure what any of this means at first. But it looks like something similar to regex. So then, so then I go to the root of the directory, or the repo, and I check out the cargo.toml file. See if there's anything related to pest, because there's probably a library for it. Sure enough, there is. Pest. Look it up at crates.io. It's a thing. Pest, the elegant parser. Pest is a general purpose parser written in Rust with a focus on accessibility, correctness, and performance. It uses parsing, expressing grammar, or peg, as input, which are similar in spirit to regular expressions, but which offer the enhanced expressivity needed to parse complex languages. Oh, okay. I read this and ultimately understood what was going on. So then I'll go back to the PEST file, right? And in the PEST file, if we look for parcel is expressions. Here we go. We see that this is just the rule for it. And thus, um, when you're checking against the rules, at least in the, the test, you're just making sure that those strings parsed out and hit this rule, which then you can probably act on later. And everything started making sense to me. So I say all of that to say this. If you are ever confused about the syntax to use for parcels, you can just look at the source code, and it gives you a bunch of different examples of how you can try to run it. Um, and ultimately, you can use this syntax, which is the same as the one that is used in the handlebars JSON uh, documentation. And you can probably use this again, this as well. That seems fine. It might get rid of white space, it might not. I'm not sure. Oh, the last thing I wanted to cover is going back to warp. So let's bring in this full circle. So in the warp documentation, they have examples. And one of the examples is handlebars templates. So how we use them, how do we use them here? So in this example, which I'm not going to run, I'm just going to read through. Let's go to main real quick and see what it's like. Tokyo main, because it's async. Async, registering main, got it. We have our template, which is a string. Um, just says hello for the most part. And here is the variable that we're going to be passing in. So they create a new instance of handlebars. They register the template, which is this, as a template.html. And then next, they turn handlebars instance into a filter so we can combine it easily with others. So they wrap handlebars in an arc, which should make it, um, which should allow us to be able to use it in the context of uh, parallel or multiple calls at once, like pass it between threads and whatnot. So yes, that's nice. And then create a reusable closer to render the template. So we have move with template, render with template, and then we have the clone. And this is the closer, so we're passing in the variable with template. OK? And then we have their git call, or their git route. Warp git. And we end that path, so it's just a straight URL path. And then we map 
empty here with template name value and the JSON and then we map handlebars okay so what is with template so we're scrolling up with template is a serializable struct which if you recall from handlebars the data that we passed in has to be serializable we have a name which they're just going to make it to a static string and then we have a value which is t because we can pass in any type of data really into the, the um, template handlebars alright so we just talked about with template and with template is going to create that, that that struct right and then we do another map so if we look at the closure again we have handlebars we have with template which we're passing the data from here and then we have a render function that is called with template and then the clone. And we scroll back up. Here is the render function. It takes in a template and it takes in the arc, the uh, handlebars arc. And it re returns a reply, a warp reply. And it notes that T has to be serializable. So you have to be able to be serialized. All right, moving onward, we have handlebars. We call render on it. We pass in the template name, and then we pass in a reference to the value, which is exactly how we've been using handlebars throughout all of the handlebars documentation. If there is an error, they're just writing it out to string. If you want, you can deal with it other ways. You have your options. It's just a dot method. And then lastly, they're doing warp reply HTML render. So more or less, this is writing out the template with all the data in it, and then we're just spitting that back out. And essentially, that is how you use handlebars with warp. Whew, that was a lot. That was a lot. That was a big brain dump. Um, I'm, I'm going to go take a break. See you next time. Peace.